Welcome to the fourth lecture of week one. This is about centrifugal sedimentation and industrial equipment used uh, for sedimentation process. This particular lecture is uh, um, uh, divided in two parts that is lecture four and lecture five. In lecture four, I will speak about centrifugal sedimentation and in lecture five, we will discuss industrial equipment. So, let us start with centrifugal sedimentation. Now, what is centrifugal sedimentation? Uh, the centrifugal force you all understand that it is uh, in uh, radial direction. So, when centrifugal forces are involved in separation processes, gravitational forces are overcome. Thus, separation efficiency is enhanced significantly. So, what happens in centrifugal force that when we consider the sedimenter uh, in usual sedimenter what happens the particle starts uh, settling down. However, in centrifugal sedimentation what happens the equipment uh, revolves uh, with uh, a very high rpm. So, what happens the slurry which is available in that that is collected uh, that uh, spread at the periphery of this due to centrifugal forces. Now, if uh, we have heavier particles as well as uh, the uh, if we consider the slurry which contains the um, uh, solid particle as well as solvent. So, what happens solid particle will be because of because they are uh, more heavy. Uh, so, it will be collected at the wall of the equipment. However, at the uh, inner layer uh, uh, we have the clear liquid. So, in that way the separation occurs. So, that is due to centrifugal action. Now, if we consider the centrifugal forces as well as gravitational forces, the centrifugal forces are very high in comparison to gravitational forces. So, the ratio of centrifugal forces to gravitational force that is omega square r is uh, due to centrifugal force and g is due to gravitational force is often of the order of several thousands and is a measure of separating power of the machine incorporating centrifugal force. So, what happens because this centrifugal forces uh, uh, ratio with the gravitational force is very high, the separation uh, becomes very easy or very fast in comparison to centrifugal forces in comparison to normal sedimentation which uh, works under gravity. So, separation can be carried out much more rapidly in a centrifuge than under the action of gravity. So, as far as centrifuges are concerned, these are of two type. First is the tubular bowel centrifuge. Tubular bowel centrifuge is shown in this diagram where here uh, we have the smaller diameter. However, length is significantly high in comparison to uh, diameter. So, in this case feed enters from the bottom and this total bowel uh, revolves with very high rpm. So, what happens the feed which is uh, coming into this uh, chamber that is inside, inside the bowel which revolves. So, what happened the particle the heavier particle uh, which uh, due to centrifugal forces the heavier particles are collected at the periphery of this and forms a heavy layer. Now, inside this we have the liquid layer which is lighter than the particle. So, these are used for separation of solid uh, and uh, liquid as well as liquid uh, which is one is having more density or we call that heavy liquid and second is lighter. So, it they, they are also used to separate liquid of different uh, densities uh, and uh, slurry which is uh, which contains uh, particles as well as solvent or uh, liquid. So, at the periphery of this bowel that is tubular bowel uh, at the periphery of this heavy uh, layer is formed due, uh, due to the particle and which is collected at the top and lighter liquid which is available inside the layer of heavy layer heavy particles or heavy material the light uh, liquid which is uh, available that is collected from uh, another path. So, here we have the heavier fraction as well as lighter fraction both are collected. So, 
what happens this is uh, here we have uh, uh, feed enters from the bottom usually in sedimentation normal gravity sedimentation feed enters from the top sometimes it also it enters from the bottom also in sedimentation uh, tank but here uh, in uh, tubular bowl it is always entered from the bottom so this is the tubular bowl centrifuge second centrifuge we have is the disc bowl centrifuge which is shown in this diagram what happens in disc bowl centrifuge here we have the bowl and uh, inside this we have different uh, we have many disc which are available one over another with a specific distance so what happens in this case uh, feed enters from the top feed enters from the top and this uh, uh, complete assembly that is uh, the shaft where the uh, disc are uh, available this assembly rotates so what happens feed which is coming from the top it is uh, first uh, divided into in two sections that is uh, both side of the bowl as you can see in this diagram and uh, when we when it is rotated so what happens the solid which is available in this that is collected over here or uh, the heavier uh, liquid which is available if we need to separate uh, two liquids of different density so heavier one will be collected at the periphery however lighter one will be uh, transposed from these uh, uh, disc to the top so here another diagram we have this is uh, again another example of the disc bowl centrifuge where liquid is collected from inner section of where discs are available and solid is uh, and heavier liquid is collected at uh, outer section of this uh, disc whereas liqu lighter liquid is uh, we have taken from the center now solid which is deposited over here that we can take out so here we have basically the separation of solid liquid and separation of heavier liquid as well as lighter liquid so both can be separated in this and this disc bowl centrifuge as well as tubular bowl centrifuge both are used uh, to separate the uh, to separate the particles as well as heavy and light liquid so here we have uh, in centrifuge sedimentation we are going to derive the expression to calculate volume which is contained which can be contained in the bowl the residence time of the particle and we will again we will further define the cut diameter which speaks about that how much fraction or how much size of the particle can be separated and beyond that particle cannot be separated through centrifugal sedimentation so to start this so here we will discuss the shape of the liquid surface and liquid volume in the bowl now to derive the expression first of all we should understand what type of uh, trajectory is uh, found is observed during the uh, centrifugal action in bowl when uh, centrifugal forces act or when centrifugal action is taking place in a bowl the liquid is collected at the periphery all liquid will be collected at the periphery and form a vertex now what happens when speed of the when rpm is very high or when the speed of rotation is very high what happen liquid will be collected at the wall of the container or wall of the bowl so when we consider a high speed you can see in this diagram you can see in this diagram which has radius r and uh, total height as uh, b now here you see this uh, total um, after centrifuge what happens this uh, we have the factor r a as well as r b which speaks about the trajectory now in high speed when we consider high speed all liquid will be accumulated uh, at the periphery of uh, the bowl so it will uh, trajectory will start from uh, r a to r b so at high speed this type of uh, uh, profile we get however at low speed the vortex forms a parabolic like uh, trajectory parabolic like uh, profile as shown in figure this as well as this in this diagram we have lesser speed in comparison to this diagram so here we have 
proper parabolic however here it is uh, parabolic is not formed completely and in this fi uh, first figure uh, at very high speed parabolic is not appear at all so a liquid element at y distance liquid element at y distance if you consider this particular figure here we have y we are considering for height and x we are considering for radius so liquid element at y distance from the bottom that is this and x distance from the axis of rotation that is from the center will experience a centrifugal force omega square x now if we have the x dis distance and y at this point if any liquid element is available it will experience omega square into x centrifugal force per unit mass in the radial direction as we have discussed the centrifugal force will act in radial direction so at this particular position the centrifugal forces per unit mass is omega square x however uh, it will also act uh, the this element will have the experience of gravitational forces that is g per unit mass which is uh, which will act downward so the slope of liquid at this particular point x and y that is at this point can be defined as dy by dx which is equal to omega square x by g now on integration using the condition that at y equal to b x equal to r naught so here we have uh, y equal to when y equal to b that is at the top uh, x should be r naught so at this particular condition from here to here we will integrate so here we have this particular uh, equation where, where dy by dx is omega square x by g when we integrate this while com putting the value y equal to b and x equal to r naught we can find this particular equation where y is related with x square now volume of the bowl how we will calculate volume of the bowl is vl is a we integrate from 0 to b pi r square minus x square that is uh, at particular point pi r square minus x square that is for this particular section into dy so he that is the volume of the liquid in bowl so when we replace x square from this equation to this equation and integrate uh, this uh, uh, equation from 0 to b we can get final expression of uh, vw uh, v, uh, final expression of vl as pi b b bracket g by omega square plus bracket r square minus r naught square so this is the expression of volume now if this is this is the condition where we have the parabol complete parabolic is formed after distance b naught from the bottom so in this case total volume of the liquid would be pi r square into b naught that is total volume of liquid available in this particular section and then we will integrate from b naught to b pi r square minus x square into dy now in this particular equation what happens uh, that uh, uh, this expression we have uh, integrated from 0 to b we can find this now if we replace this b by b minus b naught because b naught to b is the limit of this particular expression so as this is uh, the integrated part of this uh, after integration we can find this expression where b we can replace with b minus b naught and then the whole um, expression would be put over here in place of this and after solving this we can get the e expression of vl like this now here we have another factor that is b naught so since y equal to b naught at y equal to b naught x would be 0 so from this equation at y equal to b naught x would be 0 from this equation we can find b naught expression and while putting this b naught into this we can calculate total volume which is available in this type of container this type of uh, centrifuge where volume can be in terms of all known parameter like uh, b r naught etc g omega all these we, we can find so here using this expression we can calculate volume of the liquid which is available in bowel
So, here we will discuss the centrifugal sedimentation where force balance will be discussed to calculate the residence time of the particle. Now, feed enters at the bottom and solid particles tend to get dragged by liquid and also moves radially due to centrifugal force. So, effective trajectory would, would be like this as we have discussed previously. As the magnitude of centrifugal force is very high, then the gravitational force it is assumed that particles settle only in radial direction because centrifugal forces are higher. So, particle will be suspended in the liquid instead of settling down. So, at t equal to 0, particle will be in a liquid at radial distance that is x plus h1. For example, if x plus h1 over here at time equal to t it should be x plus h2 at this. So, this distance when we consider so that uh, time required to move this distance would be the residence time in uh, centrifuge. So, to calculate this we make the force balance on the particle and this is the net acceleration here uh, we have this uh, mg minus that is due to weight of particle itself this is due to buoyancy and this is due to drag forces. Now, as this equation is valid when gravity uh, forces will act. In this case, as uh, centrifugal forces uh, dominate, so we will replace g value with omega square x. So, here m a e would be equal to m by rho s, rho s minus rho f, omega square x plus h minus f r x plus h is the distance uh, at which particle is available in the solution. Now, here we have different uh, expression for f r and we can define different uh, conditions for laminar as well as turbulent flow. So, if particle is very fine, very small, the settling zone we may be considered as laminar. In that case, f r can be defined by this expression where v is the velocity which can be replaced by d x plus h by d t. Once we put this in the previous expression that is in the uh, here we have replaced m uh, of the particle as volume of the particle into density and this is the acceleration term and here the same uh, m we have replaced and rest uh, parameter are as it is and f r we have kept like this. So, this is the equation while putting all expressions. Uh, so, further we can redefine the equation in terms of z where a 1, b 1 and z are defined in this way. So, the integration constant can be found at uh, considering the case that at t equal to 0 z should be x plus h 1 and at t t z should be x plus h 2. So, if particle moves with the terminal settling velocity, what is the meaning of this that at terminal settling velocity there will not be any net force which is acting on the particle. So, net uh, acceleration would be in that case 0. So, uh, when we neglect this particular term because it is 0 and while solving these two expression we can get the equation like this that is d uh, x plus h by d t in this form. So, that is uh, the case when no acceleration is applicable. Integrating above equation from t equal to 0 to t equal to t t where we can find the residence time of the particle in the centrifuge. So, where t t is the residence time of the particle in the centrifuge. Similarly, if we have larger particle, we assume a turbulent flow where a drag coefficient is uh, we are considering as k t. So, this is the equation for f r that is uh, f r equal to a k f, a is the projected area of particle, k is the kinetic energy per unit volume of the particle and f is the drag coefficient that is k t in this case. So, while putting this f r we can get like this again for no acceleration condition we can find this uh, expression where the whole parameter whole uh, expression is converted into k c square. So, in that case again while integrating we can get uh, residence time of the particle in this uh, form. Further, for very high speed vertical liquid surface is obtained as shown in the figure like uh, here we have the this way. So, in that case um, initial x plus h 1 should be r a and uh, x plus h 2 should be r b. 
So, while uh, for this case when we consider we have a residence time uh, of particle for laminar zone this. So, here this all this we will replace with R A and R B and similarly for turbulent flow we can replace this and this as R B and R A. So, after replacing this we can get final residence time for the turbulence zone for the laminar zone as well as turbulent zone. However, these equation cannot be used directly for design of industrial centrifuge since we do not know at what x the particle is settling or at what position in the liquid R A or H 1. The particle originally was at t equal to 0. Now, if R B in this particular equation if R B is equal to R capital R when we are considering so the particle is separated. So, when R B is equal to R that is it is uh, it should be at uh, the wall we consider the particle to, to be separated. However, when R B is lesser than R it will be carried with the liquid. So, these are the residence time expressions. We can also find residence time alternatively like uh, considering total volume which is uh, volume of the liquid in the bowl divided by the flow rate that is volumetric flow rate division of these two will give the residence time where Q is the rate of flow of liquid through the bowl. And here we have to define one parameter that is very important parameter and that is called as the cut size. The cut size we can denote as dpc of the particle for centrifugation is defined as the particle of size dpc will settle through a distance equal to half the thickness of the liquid layer inside the bowl during its residence time in the bowl. Thus, the cut size of the particle settles through a distance r minus r naught by 2 within the residence time tt. So, what is the meaning of this that when residence time when we consider the uh, cut diameter of the particle it means it will settle at this distance. So, particle which is lesser than the dpc that will not be settled and particle which are higher in size than dpc will be settled because they will move in this particular distance. In that case R A should be capital R minus uh, capital R minus R naught by 2. So, this is the total uh, res, uh, distance uh, total radius of the bowl and this is the distance they will move. So, while solving this we can consider this particular uh, expression where R A. So, R A is nothing but the distance of half of the layer uh, it will be R A and R B would be the capital R in that case if we consider the cut diameter. So, for laminar zone we can calculate Q C like this. Now, how this expression we have obtained is we have this Q value and the uh, Q C we have uh, defined uh, here if you consider the previous slide here we have the T T expression. Once we put T T expression in this and then after then solving it for Q we can obtain the e equation like this. Similarly, for turbulent zone we have this expression where k c dash we can define like this. So, how we can define uh, these equation because we have already uh, residence time uh, in laminar zone as well as in turbulent zone. So, uh, that um, uh, expression we have put to calculate the q value because we have two expression of t t and uh, then we can replace and then calculate it q for laminar as well as turbulent. So, here we have the example uh, of uh, centrifugal sedimentation where a centrifuge with 70 centimeter diameter and 35 centimeter height is being operated at 1000 rpm. It is employed to clarify a slurry consists of solid particle with specific gravity 1.5 in a liquid of a specific gravity 1.2 and viscosity 4 centipoise at 150 meter cube per hour. If 5 centimeter thick liquid layer is formed inside the bowl and having following particle size distribution compute what percent of particles will be separated in this centrifuge. So, here we have the problem and uh, the uh, particle size data will available over here that is particle size uh, minus and plus and all fraction which is available on this particular screen. 
So, we have to use this data, uh, we have to calculate the percentage of particle size which can be separated. So, first of all what we have to calculate is the all flow rates uh, we know that is the Q value we know. So, we can calculate the cut diameter of the particle and uh, we will uh, see that how, my, how many particles are available above to this. So, all those particle percent of particle will be separated and particle which are lesser than the cut diameter that should not be separated. So, first of all we have to calculate the cut diameter. So, here we have the particle uh, as the particle size is very small here you can see the part, uh, particle size that is maximum is uh, uh, maximum can be uh, 0 0.09 and minimum is 0 0.02. So, that is particle size is very small. So, we can consider this as a laminar zone. QC expression for laminar zone is this that just we have discussed. Uh, so, here we have this uh, D we have replaced with DPC that is the cut diameter. So, here we have QC value which is 150 meter cube per hour that is given. So, we can represent this in centimeter cube per second B R rho S rho F mu f r naught r naught how we will calculate total diam uh, total radius of the bowel we know and we know that 5 uh, centimeter layer is formed so total r naught should be the um, outer edge uh, and the uh, starting of the starting uh, distance from the axis starting distance of uh, layer that is the 5 centimeter thick layer is there. So, 35 um, centimeter is the radius. So, R naught. How R naught we will calculate is R minus thickness of the layer. So, R is basically the radius of the bowel which is 35 centimeter and 5 uh, centimeter thick layer is formed inside. So, R naught will be 35 minus 5 that is 30 centimeter. Omega we can calculate because 1000 rpm is given to us. So, once we calculate, uh, once we put all this value into this and calculate DPC, the DPC can be found as 0.0435 mm. Now, we are, now we are given the particle size distribution data. So, that we will represent in cumulative form to see how many particles are available which is, ha which is having size greater than uh, the DPC that is 0 0.0435. So, to do this we can have the cumulative value in this uh, uh, table where all uh, values uh, size is available and fraction will be keep on adding because it is cumulative. So, here we can see this cut diameter is 0 0.0435 mm which lies in between these two. So, once we calculate uh, corresponding to this the total fraction we found is 0 0.247. So, 0 0.247 will lie below DPC. So, 1 minus 0 0.247 into 100 that is 75.3 percent particle will be separated because their size would be greater than the size uh, the cut diameter which is which we have just calculated. So, in this particular example 75.3 percent particle will be separated. So, in this way we can derive the equation for centrifugal sedimentation and we can use this for the uh, calculation purpose for uh, to calculate how many particles are available etcetera. Um, so, uh, that is all about the centrifugal sedimentation. So, in for this se uh, session we have to st uh, stop over here, in next session we will continue the, uh, we will discuss the industrial equipment available for sedimentation. So, that is all for now, thank you.